Hi, welcome. My name is Daryl Lyon and in this video I will be presenting my research topic Radiation Shielding Space, the novel use of scattering phenomena, which is a project 17 of the Chemical Engineering Research Project offered in semester 2 2019. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge the contribution of both my research supervisor, Dr. Shane Usher, and my project research partner, Mr. Josef Said. Well, with the ambition of setting their feet on Mars by 2030, many developed countries such as the United States, Japan, and Russia have increased the number of space missions with a goal of gaining a deeper understanding of life in space. To protect the space crew from dangerous level of cosmic or solar radiation, the walls of the spacecraft are made up of very thick composite materials known as radiation shield with a goal of stopping gamma and x-rays with energy exceeding 0.2 kilo electron volt. However, even with such protection, astronauts or cosmonauts are still being exposed to radiation level ranging from 20 to 2000 millisieverts for a six month duration mission to the International Space Mission, which evidently put them at risk of developing cancers. Those so-called radiation shells operate mostly for the mechanism of absorption and are often made up of lead, concrete, and polyphylene that was introduced by NASA in 2004. As for the research being done in that field, safer materials like, for example, replacing lead are being developed with better shielding properties. However, little to no work has been done with like about the exploration about the understanding the potential of scattering phenomena as an alternative to the traditional mechanism of radiation shield which is absorption and that leads us to the hypothesis where we have a spacecraft in front of a star which could be the sun and we propose that in this project that by placing a target object in between the sun and the spacecraft the amount of incident photons that that will usually reduce like will that would usually reach the spacecraft would be reduced like very like significantly as the target object will deflect most of the incoming photons so to test this hypothesis we are to identify first the predominant scattering methods that will be used to like validate this hypothesis. Sigon define a an equation or a relationship that relates the energy and the angle of the scattered photons with the relative proportion of scattered photons. And third, we aim to understand how an optimal um range of scattering angles that exists could be obtained for which a majority of the scattered photons with highest energy will flow after striking the shielding object. So first let's explore the different photon interactions that exist. First we have the photoelectron effect sorry photoelectric effect when incident photons strike the surface and ob of an object and then causes the release of photoelectric like electrons in the outer valence shell of the atom. Typically the energy of those incident photons will be in the range of the of gamma rays which is only a few hundred kilo electron volts. Second we have the pair production where an incident photon like decomposes into like two particles upon like striking a metal surface and produces a negative particle like electron and a positive particle which is highly unstable known as a positron and like instantaneously decomposes into two photons of lower energy 
and the energy of the incident photons is typically in the gamma range and is greater than 5 mega electron volt. Third, we have the Compton scattering, where the incident photons with energy EI strikes an electron at rest and then moves at an angle theta, which is known as a scattering angle, with an energy of like EF. Part of the energy is transferred to the electron at rest, and the electron now the scattered electron now moves at another angle, such that the vector sum of the change in momentum for the system is zero. The energy for the incident photons EI is mostly mid-range between 1 and 2 mega electron volt. And the last scattering is a Thomson scattering phenomenon, where an incident photon with energy E is like deflected by after hitting an electron at rest with the same energy the electron does not move and the momentum is conserved in this system. The Thomson scattering occurs at any energy like range for the incident photons but is very negligible compared to Compton, photoelectric effect and pair production. For this experiment we've concluded that Compton scattering is the required phenomenon that could be used to explain the explain and validate the research proposal. Second, we have like based our calculation on the Compton experiment where monochromatic X-rays with energy of around 200 kilo electron volt generated from an X-ray tube passes through a slate before interacting with the scattering object. The energy of the scattered photons EF is measured using a rotating X-ray detector mounted onto a protector. Using the relationship of like scattering energy and the scattering angle theta discovered by Com Archer Compton in 1923. A graph of energy of scattered photons EF and an angle of scattered photons theta is plotted for an incident photon energy of 200 kilo electron volt and this graph was generated in Excel. Then by manipulating the equation for the differential cross-section d sigma discovered by Klein and Nishina in 1923 and using chain rule the differential d sigma by def is given by equation 4 and this is known as a Klein Nishina probability function Compton scattering. If the differential cross section, if the differential cross section d sigma is an angle that captures the amount of flux through a solid angle, the differential d sigma by def describes the probability at for which the highest proportion of scattered photons may be found. And using this equation, using equation four here, two graphs are plotted. The first graph is a Compton scattering cross section d sigma by df against the energy of the scattered photons ef, which was generated in Excel, and the second graph is the Compton scattering cross section d sigma by def. But in this case like with the angle of scattered photons theta and by using a graphical method an optimal angle can be used to detect the amount of to define the amount of photons that go in a particular segment of the solid angle for example let's say at 
10 degrees we have an energy of around 198 and corresponding to that energy 198 kV we have this as the probability of finding an electron with that energy and with the same scattered photons at 10 degrees we also have this probability of finding a photons at, with that angle so in a way using a graphical method you can pick an angle and determine both the energy energy like here and for that energy we can determine the amount of photons with that energy and similarly we can also determine for that angle the amount of photons going through with that angle and by doing so we can define we can find an optimum range of angle for which we can get maximum scattering for example if we choose like 80 degrees we need we can repeat the process again for to define to get the energy of scattered photons and based on the energy of scattered photons that will be around 150 and around 150 we would get this is would be the proportion of all photons with like that energy and it would be and at 80 degrees again we will get the proportion of all photons with that scattered angle as conclusion we mentioned that Compton scattering phenomena is a chosen like phenomenon to validate our proposal the key two key parameters in this research was the Klein Nishina differential cross section d sigma and the energy of the scattered photons EF. And we found that a graphical method could be used to determine the scattering angles that gives maximum scattering. And this could also be like replicate, this also could, re, could be repeated for any given incident photon energy. Hence, the hypothesis of placing a target object between a star and the spacecraft in order to block most of the like incident for incoming photons is therefore validated for as research work since we've considered only photons in the form of gamma rays and x-rays which are neutral particles more work has to be done to to apply this concept to charged particles like alpha particles second it could also be beneficial to develop a slate that could make the flow of incident photons unidirectional this means like in this research we assume on, on like we assume that the gamma rays will flow only in one direction and third we need also to determine the thickness of the scattering shield based on the intensity of the photon absorbed and the linear alternation factor of the material. That was all for this research. Here's my list of references. Thank you for your attention. Have a good day.